Good morning. Welcome to Salem Lutheran Church Outdoor Worship Service, SOS. Uh, we're glad you're here. If you're here with us live or with us live stream, thank you for joining us. Just a few announcements this morning. Today after church, we do have fellowship, so join us for some good donuts and treats that Sharon has put together for us and uh, some good conversation that will come from that. Other announcements. We have several things coming up in the near future, and I want to make certain that we mention them each week so we can remind people about them and actually get some more people to come on out and join us. On September 29th, I know that seems like it's a long way away. It's only the first, right? 28 days away. We have a special celebration and our monthly uh, special meal, uh, the fellowship meal. And basically, it's the ice cream social and celebrating 70 years of wedded bliss between George and Shirley. So we're looking forward to having that party and going a little bit crazy that day. So it'll be a fun time. So join us for that. Um, I guess today is the last day to RSVP for that. I don't know exactly how many people there are thinking we're going to call them and tell them they're coming. But uh, uh, Beth Ann was the one who you might want to give a call if uh, – you're bringing like a, a gaggle of people. The other event that we have going on right now is a fundraising event for our roof. The sanctuary roof that needs replaced, well, we're putting on a program. And that program is in conjunction with some uh, Jeep groups. And uh, we are going to have a car show, Jeep show, as well as a uh, what we call Jeep retreat. It's somewhat similar to a trunk retreat. Where we're going to have those Jeeps out here in the parking lot handing out candy to the kids that come around on the 19th of October. So if you're interested in helping out with that, please let somebody from the council know. We'll get you involved. Um, we have several things going on that day. We're trying to get some food trucks set up. We have a bake sale that's going to be going on. So if you have some really good baked goods that you want to share with us so that we can sell those and make some money off it, that would be awesome. We have some games and... Uh, We'll also have the trick-or-treating that's going on. We'll also open up the actual sale of the raffle tickets that we have coming up. Right now we have two electric bikes that were donated for the raffle. And each bike uh, will be separately, separately raffled. And the tickets, we're only going to sell 100 tickets for each one. All of them are $100 each. It's a $2,000 bicycle. And if you want to get a chance to buy that bicycle, buy one of the 100 tickets, you'll have a 1 in 100 chance in getting that. So it's a lot better odds than playing the lotto, that's for sure. So join us in getting a, an electric bike. And heck, if you don't have a Christmas present for me yet, you can always <laughs> buy a ticket, win it, and hand it off. I, it doesn't matter to me. So those, there are two of those that are going to be uh, auctioned off, or not auctioned off, but raffled off. Uh, at the point that we actually sell the 100th ticket. Um, if you're interested in donating something that would be of value that we could raffle off as well, uh, please let us know, and uh, we will do that same thing with that item. Uh, like if you like have a car or something that you just want to get rid of, a house that you just, you know, no longer need, you know, you want to you know, give that to the church, hand it off to us, give us the title, We'll put it into an auction and raise some money for the roof. Any ideas like that, please feel free to, to join with us as we go forward with this event in October. We have little flyers up here, and one of the ideas that we had for helping get the word out is this is kind of like an assault on Jeeps. I don't know if that's the right term for it, but we have these little flyers, and if you see a Jeep in, in the wild, go up and put one of these little flyers on their window, and they'll be extra advised of the event that's coming up on the 21st, on the 19th. I keep saying the 21st. It's the 19th of October. And uh, then they'll know, hey, this is a Jeep-only event. It's a special event for Jeeps. Come on out, decorate your Jeep, get spooky, and help us scare the kids. Um, there is a Bible study every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. How about that? You didn't even have to remind me about that this week. Eh. Anyway, it's a great Bible study. We studied uh, Psalm 61 this week, and next week we'll be doing Psalm 62. So if either of those uh, strike your fancy as a psalm that you want to look into a little bit deeper, 
check out Pastor Nathan's live stream that we posted earlier today at 9 o'clock till 10, or 9 till 9.30. Or uh, you can join us at the via Zoom by going to www.slcw.org and clicking that link that says, click here to join group. That's on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Pastor Nathan leads the Bible study, and you won't be, you won't be upset about joining in. So join us, if you will. Pastor understands that it's fabulous. I, I totally understand. As a round of applause is formed. All right, yes. Are there any other announcements that I'm forgetting? I guess the only other thing that I want to make mention of is that Amanda is, as you can see, is not with us today. She's not feeling well, and I think we need to all offer our prayers for a healing uh, focused on Amanda this week. Hearing no other announcements, let us begin our worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. (coughs) Please rise if you're able for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The cravings at war within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sin. Draw near to us with grace in time of need, and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, Your sins are forgiven. Amen. We begin our worship with the gathering hymn, Lord Jesus, Think on Me. Please join me in singing. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. <laughs> this is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. God, our strength, without you we are weak and wayward creatures. Protect us from all dangers that attack us from the outside, and cleanse us from all evil that arises from within ourselves, that we may be preserved through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We hear God's word. First reading is from Deuteronomy 4, 1 through 2, 6 through 9. So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take anything away from it but keep the commandments of the Lord your God with which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people, for what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today? But take care and watch yourselves closely so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the second reading is from James 1, 17 through 27. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. 
in fulfillment of his own purpose, who gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers, but forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Gospel according to Mark, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? Jesus said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about your hypocrites. As it is written, the people honors, the people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that, that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer as we now ask that you open our hearts and minds to your word, that we may hear and learn, as in his name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Isaiah prophesied wisely when he spoke of you, you hypocrites. All the problems in the world come from within our hearts. When we say things that are hurtful, those words cannot be stated without the heart being filled with darkness. Hardened hearts. If our hearts are filled with love, evil things cannot be spoken. The problems of this world don't come from what we eat. Of course, 
some people will debate that. For example, if you eat unhealthy foods, you'll be unhealthy. But which foods are unhealthy? This seems to change based on whom you speak to. Recently, uh, I had read that the food pyramid that we all grew up on is a fart. It was put out by the industries that made bread that felt that bread wasn't getting enough publicity or eaten. So they basically put out the food pyramid to encourage people to eat great amounts of bread so that the bread industry could thrive. And they suggested that the food pyramid that we grew up on may be the primary reason that we are a country that is obese and out of shape. But I'm off track. We're not talking about this. This is not what Jesus was referring to in his passage. We all have our habits and preferences for how we want to accomplish things during our lives. We all get into ruts with our reading habits, our exercise programs, our eating habits or even methods we use to lose weight. Or for others that have this terrible thing about not being able to gain weight, they have bad habits about how to gain weight. I know that when I go grocery shopping, I have a very specific list of things that I pick up. Partly due to taste preferences and habit, but also due to ease of preparation, ease of storage, and I just have always fallen into this plan that I'm okay with eating this stuff. I become complacent with my methods, and they have become broke. It's just how it's always done. I don't spend much time thinking about what I buy. I'm stuck in a rut and don't think about it at all. Now, in our church spiritual life, which is the focus of today's passage, I ask, what traditions do we follow? And of those traditions that we follow, which ones of these traditions do we do out of habit, rote? Which ones help us grow in relationship with Jesus? Which ones won't be missed if we cut at them from the service today? Are these traditions ones that we created out of full biblical understanding, following the teachings of Jesus? Or are these things that we do coming from somewhere else, something more worldly? Are any of our traditions specifically Salem-based? Meaning, do other churches in the area do the same thing? Or are we alone in that practice? Are we doing things that are detrimental to our faith? Maybe the specific thing we do isn't detrimental, but maybe because we have become so accustomed to it, so comfortable with it, doing it without thinking, maybe that has become so mechanical in nature that we have lost the spiritual and worshipful side of things. Instead of being meaningful, it is now just words we say because everybody else is doing it. Well, how can something that we do out of tradition make us lose sight of worship or lose sight of its deeper meaning? Can us doing it this way go against the teachings of God? Today's passage is not referring to hygienic issues as we've discussed or habits that we might get into, this passage is speaking of ritualistic impurity. In the first century Jewish tradition, they did not wash away because they were, wash their hands because they had dirt on them, because they were generally clean. But they did so out of a ritualistic method of cleansing themselves spiritually. The Jewish faith had purity laws. Now these were specifically developed for the priests of the temple 
But as the Pharisees and other leaders of the church would do, they would start to require those rules to be followed by all Jewish followers. The leaders of the church wanted everyone to live a priestly life. The Pharisees were doing way more than what was expected of them, and they expected the same of every Jewish follower. Now, since Jesus and his followers were actually considered leaders in that day in some of the same traditions, Jesus being confronted on this by the Pharisees, well, it was meant to be a smack in the face of Jesus, saying, you ain't doing it right. Jesus replied to them and said, this is a man-made requirement. This is not required by God. Jesus, as it was said in the lesson today, quoted Isaiah chapter 29, starting with verse 13. And it said, the Lord said, because these people draw near with their mouths and honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me, and their worship of me is a human commandment learned by rote, well, he went on to say that they just weren't really getting the gist of what worship was all about, what being a follower of God was all about. The book of Isaiah, chapters 28 through 31, were called the Woe Chronicles, or Oracles. Isaiah was speaking against Jerusalem, specifically their leadership. Isaiah was speaking about the rebellious children of the day. Isaiah was speaking about the leaders being blind and deaf to the word and prophesying that Jerusalem would soon be destroyed. This passage, both in Isaiah and in Mark, directs us to look inward at ourselves and to review the whys that we do certain things. Why is it that we worship a certain way? We're being told to focus our hearts on what we are doing, not just merely saying the words, but feeling the words as they are professed. Are we just going through the motions sometimes in this worship space? Do you see how the words could be stated but be empty, meaningless, spoken because they're just words? If we allow them to only come out from our lips and not allow our hearts to be open their deeper meaning and purpose, we're missing the point. Have we become too complacent or comfortable? How do you participate? Do you sing every hymn? Do you hear every word that's sung? Do you contemplate every word that we read or speak? Are there certain hymns that you refuse to sing, that you avoid because of some past hurt or memory? What part of the service do you feel is most worshipful? What part of the service do you open your heart to and allow the Spirit to enter in? Here, while we come out here at the pavilion, strange to call this traditional worship, but that is basically what we do. I mean by traditional worship, the old way of doing things. This is how it's done. This is the right way. Now, as we go through our worship services, we see that certain aspects of our worship are repetitive. Certain aspects of our worship service are comforting because of that familiarity. And we kind of get comfortable with them way too much. There are parts of certain settings that I would not have a, to open up the hymnal to follow along in their entirety. The music alone would lead me to every refrain. I'm sure a lot of you can say the same thing. Is it bad that we could do this? Are we being forced to sing certain songs because we believe that we have been ordered to do so? Now let me describe exactly how we come up with the service. Well, we're given a template, and then we have passages of the word. Using that template and the word, I write a sermon. Based on that word and the passages, we look up hymns and we select them to be sung that relate to the lessons. We go on a three-year cycle of passages that we read. We 
It's like music that is supposed to be connected to what we're talking about. All of this is very well planned out for us through a site called Sundays and Seasons. It helps us put together the hymns and the bulletins as you see them printed today. We do have our seasonal changes in liturgy, Advent, Christmas, Epiphany, Lent, Easter, all laid out for us to follow. Sounds like I'm telling you that we have been falling in line with our worldly leaders in order to toe the line in our worship. We do it exactly as they tell us to do it, doesn't it? We have to remember Jesus told us to go and make disciples, to preach the gospel of salvation through the cross, to the forgiveness of sins through Jesus. We must stay focused on this truth. As long as we do, the worldly problems will not be able to interrupt our worship. It does seem in our world that there have been things directing us a certain way. Rules being made by general society, demands being placed on us in order to direct our path, agendas being laid out for us to follow, worldly agendas, worldly directions. Our focus cannot stray to bow down to earthly suggestions, to earthly regulations. We must stand firm in our professing of faith in Jesus. We must stand firm with our focus and make our hearts open to Jesus, paying attention to his word. This is what Jesus was telling us to do in this passage today. He wanted us not to worry about the worldly requirements set up for us by man, but instead to focus our hearts on Jesus, on his truth, on his teaching, on his forgiveness, on his salvation that has been granted to us all. I ask that as we leave here today, as we say the words today that we'll be saying in the Nicene Creed, that we focus our energies on those words and their deeper meanings. That we give our hearts a moment to allow those words to enter into us and refresh us from this weary world of chaos, allowing them to cleanse us from within, allowing our hearts to be softened, and removing the darkness that we hold inside. Be mindful today of each and every word spoken during communion, following during the prayer, and I pray that we all can experience the power that is the expression of love so freely given to us all through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Amen. We continue our service with singing the hymn of the day. O oh God, my faithful God, please rise and sing with me if you are able.
living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. God of every generation, give the church a sense of purpose and belonging. Sustain and build up leaders and lay people as we accompany one another in our life with Christ. God of creation, you named humans as co-creators with you. For the earth cries out in pain, bring wholeness. Guide governments and industries that environmental laws and practices seek to heal and not harm. Sovereign God, we pray for local communities of every kind, rural and urban, established and new. Lead those in authority to seek the good of all through their words and actions and to mentor others in honest and generous ways. Merciful God, God, you draw near to all who are hurting. Be with all who desire relief from chronic and acute illness, cancer, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Strengthen health care workers, therapists, and caregivers. Tend to those who are close to our hearts, especially Mike, Betty, Melba, Sammy, Regina, Cheryl, Shirley, George, Chet, Marvin, Terry, Patty, Bill, Mike, Amanda, Monica, Sue, Jean, family of Rick, family of Marion, family of Noreen, family of Lynn, family of Zachary, and those whom we now name aloud or in our hearts. On this Labor Day weekend, we remember and give thanks for all who have fought for workers' rights around the world. Continue to improve working conditions and establish fair wages so that all people may thrive. 
comforting God console us as we mourn our departed. We hold fast to the promise that death has been defeated by our Savior Jesus Christ, merciful God. trust these and all our prayers to you, holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's take a moment and share that peace with one another.
at the vineyards. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful god through our savior jesus christ who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection Open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God most mighty, O God most merciful, O God our rock and our salvation, hear us as we praise. Call us to your table. Grant us your life. For when the world was a formless void, you formed order and beauty. When Abraham and Sarah were barren, you sent them a child. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them to freedom. Ruth faced starvation. David fought Goliath. And the psalmist cried out for healing and full of compassion, you granted your people life. You entered our sorrows in Jesus, our brother. He was born among the poor. He lived under oppression. He wept over the city. With infinite love, he granted the people your life. For in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks. And gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
for the remembrance of me. And now remembering his death, we cry out, Amen. Amen. Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen. Amen. Trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead, Amen. Amen. O God, you are breath. Send your spirit on this meal. O God, you are bread. Feed us with yourself. O God, you are wine. Warm our hearts and make us one. O God, you are fire. Transform us with hope. O God, most majestic. O God, most motherly. O God, our strength and our song. Show us a vision of a tree of life with fruits for all, and leaves that heal the nations. Grant us such life the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Spirit of our risen Savior, life in you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy Lord. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus welcomes you to his table. Come, here is your God. And just one comment. Uh, you may have noticed I lifted something up looked a little different. Uh, Barb Buchwalder made some unleavened bread for us for communion. We still have the host, so if you'd rather have the regular host, that's fine. Or if you'd like to have the by Barb's unleavened bread, you're welcome to do that also.
Now may this body and blood strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And before I conclude with our final blessing, I'd like to thank Barb for supplying us with the bread. Uh, we used to do it that way all the time at Zion. Uh, and I remember, though, one person, after the first time we did it, uttered to me the words that I call the uh, battle cry of the church. I told that to Tim after his sermon. You know what the battle cry of the church is, don't you? We've never done it that way before. <laughs> so with that, now receive the blessings of our Lord. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you, keep you, and give you peace. Amen. We conclude our service with the singing of our sending hymn, Take My Life That I May Be. Now go in peace. Follow Jesus.